Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to do a really creative edit with the new Transcendent Actions Collection. Uh, this is the bef um, well, this, sorry, this is the after picture, and then this is sorry, hold on, this is the before picture. So we're going to go from this to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just delete all of these layers here and throw those away, and then we'll start fresh. So the first thing I'm going to run from Transcendent is Midnight, and this one's in the Creative Action section. If you have Elements, yours won't be separated like this, um, unless you have Elements 11. Um, but if you, they'll be alphabetical, so, um, in Elements, sorry. So grab Midnight and hit Play. And this one's just going to cool it down, make it look like nighttime, and then it'll tell you what you can do with it, and hit Continue. Okay, so from there I'm going to go grab my Darken Brush, and that is up in the Image Adjustment section. Just grab Darken Brush and hit Play, and this one allows you to paint on shadows and um, darkening and stuff like that. So we're going to grab our white paint brush, and then we are just going to paint. I want to kind of make her hands look a little bit withered, um, kind of distressed, so we're going to just kind of paint some shadows here into her hands um, as if they're kind of sunken in a little bit. Maybe make her nails a little bit darker here. Um, but again, just with a white paintbrush you can do this. And then just kind of slowly paint these on here. Uh, you can kind of go crazy with it if you want. We can reduce the opacity later if you wish. Um, so yeah, just paint it on there. I'm going to try to do this um, kind of quickly so we can get through here and the file isn't too large for the video. Um, but so there is darkening brush on her hands. I'm going to paint a little bit through her hair uh, wherever the shadows kind of fall already. There we go. Maybe some up here in this part of her hair. Okay. So then we can always come back to this layer later if you need to. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is brighten brush and then this one I'm going to use to add highlights and um, brightening and stuff in here so I'm going to go in and wherever the highlights are on her fingers I'm going to bring those out as well that way they kind of pop and get dimension here <clears throat> oops sorry okay so yeah just paint wherever the light is kind of falling I'm going to move this really quick and then you can paint here um, into the hair as well anywhere that light is. And you can make this brush a little bit smaller if you want to kind of get in there to little pieces and bring out the brightness on those. Yeah, so there's no exact science, just kind of paint it on there and see what you think. <coughs> um, the next thing I'm going to do is color painting. I need to come in here and grab color painting. And this one's also in image adjustments. Um, and again, it's one of the painting actions, so you won't see any changes until you grab a white brush and paint it on there. And then I'm just going to do this all in her hair. I just kind of want to make it look vibrant and crazy colored. So we're going to go crazy with it here. And I'm just painting along, unclicking my brush as I go, reclicking it. Um, again, no exact science, just kind of seeing what looks good and what I like, and then going from there. paint some here. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of cool down her face a little bit. I kind of want to look like the front of her is in shadow. And then later on we're going to put some light behind her. So I want to um, cool down the front of her a little bit. Just make it look more nighttime-esque. So we're going to use Surge. And this is in the toning actions. And Surge is an action I use to reduce reds, like in skin tones and stuff like that. So we're going to run this and then we are going to invert this layer mask and the layer mask will automatically be selected um, so just hit control I if it's not automatically selected just click it and then hit control I and then at 20 percent opacity I'm just gonna brush that coolness on her face a little bit here and on the whole front little section of this photo I just kinda want it to look um, you know as if she's facing the night and the light is kinda creeping in behind her so just paint it in there um, a little bit and then we're good to go on that one. Uh, the next one I'm going to use is eye popping and this one also is in the image adjustments um, and this one is one that you have to paint on as well. 
So I'm going to put my opacity about 40% on this one and just kind of sweep it over the hair where I want it to really light up or um, have the color pop. So we're going to go here over her arm and the hair back here. Anywhere you kind of want to boost that brightness and that color, just kind of sweep over it. Um, you can even go over her hands here, just bring those back to life a little bit. They kind of got a little bit dull there, so just bring those back in. And I'm just kind of sweeping this everywhere. Go for it, whatever you think looks good. Um, and then I kind of want to do a contrast pop, so I'm going to use contrast pop and hit play. And that one pops it, pops the contrast everywhere. I'm going to invert this layer mask again, just control I, and I'm going to do this only over her hair. I just really want to get some color and vibrance in here, make it really dramatic and crazy. Um, gonna, my opacity was at 90 for that over there. I'm going to lower it to about 30 here, close to her face. I don't want my shadows to be too strong. I kind of want it to be um, a little bit softer. So we're just going to paint this in here. Um, and I actually think I'm going to flip back to black and just paint off some of those shadows over there. They're a little bit too dark. Um, there we go. Okay. So then after a contrast pop, I'm going to go with overall darken. And that one does what it says, just kind of darkens your photo all over the place. Um, I'm just going to hit the layer mask and hit control I. And then I'm just going to paint this one down here at the bottom, just adding a little more shadow down here. Um, you can add it anywhere else you'd like to add some shadow or increase the shadows anywhere. Um, then I'm going to run in the creative action section, I'm going to run Nova. And this one kind of puts some light up at the top and some coolness at the bottom, um, but I don't want it all over everywhere. So again, I'm going to hit Control I and just invert that mask. And this one's going to go only on her hair, just right up here at the top where the light is going to be hitting or where we're going to make it look like the light is hitting. So you can just fill that in there. And then next I'm going to use Slight Boost. And again, this is all just kind of eyeballing it. You could stop at this point if you thought it was good. I just kind of want to um, see what else we can do with it, how much more we can add. I'm going to invert this mask again, Control I, and I'm going to paint this down here, add some depth to the shadows, brighten those colors, same over here. And there we go, and maybe even over her fingers a little bit more as well. So there's that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add that light in the background. We're going to use light painting. And this is in the image adjustment section as well. Hit play. And then we are going to have our brush at 30% opacity. And just kind of sweep this back there a little bit. Uh, there we go. And then you can kind of increase it up at the top so it looks like it's brighter coming from that spot. Um, I'm actually going to undo that last one. I don't like that very much. So I put my brush at 10 and I'll do that up at the top instead, just kind of like it's filtering in there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to run also in the creative action section, Eerie Light. And this one's mostly uh, what I use with the midnight action. Um, just because it's got like an orangey kind of tone to the light and I think that looks good with the kind of nighttime-esque photos. So I'm just going to paint that in there a little bit and I'm going to lower the opacity of light painting. I don't want it to be that strong. I want it to look like it's kind of filtering in. Um, and then Eerie Light, you can put that, your brush at 100 and kind of fill that in here. It's not very harsh light, again, because it's for the nighttime action. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to use Retro Warmth, and this is in the toning section. Just grab that, and then invert it again. And then we're just going to paint this anywhere you want to see a tiny bit of warmth, maybe on her hair, in the light up there, a little bit on her hands. Um, and then that's it. From here, you can run um, Smooth Skin if you wanted to kind of get like a painterly effect going on with your photo. Um, you could run that quickly and then just kind of add that in. I'm going to do it at 100% just really quickly. You can kind of sweep this in here um, and just see where you wanted it. Just kind of put it in here a little bit. Um, anywhere that you think looks good. And then also with light painting, what you can do is you can add in these little orbs that I had in here. Um, just kind of at 100%. I'm just stamping some of these in here. 
quickly and then you make your brush a little bit bigger at 20% opacity and stamp over it and give it a little bit of a glow. So we just added in those orbs there and um, that kind of gives it like a I don't know, kind of a glowy feel. Um, if you didn't want to use light painting for that or maybe you wanted to change the color of the orbs, you could always do that um, on its own layer. Just add a new blank layer, grab whatever color you wanted. Maybe you want like a, um, maybe like an almost yellowy color but still kind of white. Um, and then you could just drop those on here too. I'm going to use 100% opacity. You could just drop those uh, like that. And obviously you wouldn't do this with the other color. You kind of want them to look all uniform. Um, and then you could drop your brush down to 20% opacity again and give those a glow. Um, and you could really do that with any color as long as it was kind of a, a brighter one um, so that it looks more like light. Um, but yeah, that's one way to do it. And then if you wanted to kind of give those a little bit of motion, you could even duplicate that layer. And then go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And make it go sideways. And you could put it at whatever distance you wanted. Um, Oh, I kind of like that. Okay, and then hit OK. And then you can lower the opacity of that layer um, just so that it kind of gives them a little bit more of like a, a movement glow there. I don't know. Um, but other than that, um, we're done with this edit. So this is a quick way you can do a creative edit with Transcendent. Um, I know it looks like there's a lot of actions ran, but since this is a complete workflow collection, anything you could need, any changes you need to make, you can make them with an action instead of having to have um, different levels layers or different curves layers or things like that. It's all done here. So um, you can run as many or as little actions as you want to, but this just shows you how you can stack these and really get um, a more kind of in-depth edit, if you will. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much and have a great day.